Hey everybody, I'm Mike. This is our chicken coop slash goat barn that we're building. Let me get you caught up speed real quick if you're new to the channel. This is the chicken coop slash goat barn that we're building. All right, now we got that out of the way, let's get to work. I've got some bolts through already, but I ran out of hardware, so I got a whole bunch more hardware. We're gonna drill and get try to get all the bolts in. Hopefully by the end of the video, we'll work our way through some steps and get as much of the siding that we have milled installed. That's the goal. By the way, this is the fourth video on this, I believe. So if you want to see all the previous videos, I'll put them down in the description. You can check them out. And if you like what you're, what, <laughs> if you like awkward content and people that don't know how to use words, click the like button, hit subscribe, and you know, follow along and stuff. So that whole last video I was watching myself while I was editing, and while I was working, I was thinking, man, I sure wish I had my old tool belt from when I worked full time for Dirt Perfect way back in the day, building homes, back when he owned a home building business. And uh, I managed to find it, it was buried. I haven't worn it in years. Did have to buy a new pouch, I lost the one that hung off that one side. And as soon as I figure this contraption out, I'm just trying to get a little bit more organized in life, you know? We got a lot going on. And I could really use a little organization to speed up production. So we have a bunch of carriage bolts, six inch, three eighths, zinc coated. We're just gonna load up on those. That way I don't have to keep walking back here over the whole time. And then we'll start getting them all installed. I'm pretty sure I'm spending as much on hardware as I am on lumber on this build. Some nuts. Love it. Those all went really well on there, except for that one. That one did not go really well, but the rest of them, A, love it. I gotta run some bolts on those brackets now. Right now they're just kind of held in with a T25 screw to hold the bottom in place. Let's go ahead and run some bolts in now. Beautiful. The 7 16th bit is just big enough. It's just the right size. Then whenever you're finished drilling the hole, the square collar on that carriage bolt, you can just pound it right in and it should hold it in place for you. It's been working for me so far. Beautiful, beautiful.
Not bad. It's not terrible running these bolts in and drilling these holes in place like this, but if I have a regret on this barn so far, when I made these brackets, I wish I would have taken them into the drill press and drilled them on the drill press and pre-drilled them. I think that would have saved me a lot of trouble, but we're getting it. We're getting it. It's just you know, not as enthusiastic as I probably would have been had they been pre-drilled. Visual. Tell me that's not satisfying. On the inside where these stick out, we'll probably come back and trim those off at some point. I don't know, that kind of seems like a luxury, honestly. So we've got two bolts all the way down this backside, bolts in these, bolts there and there. So much for organization, I don't have any there or there. And the ones I have weren't long enough for here. So I gotta get some longer ones. Listen, we gave the whole organization thing the good old college try. It just didn't work out today. I got a little bit of time left. I didn't have a whole lot of time today, just a couple hours. We've got a swim meet tonight. We gotta take off for just a little bit. Let's take the tractor over, get some more siding, and see if we can't get a little bit more siding put up real fast. That was a good try. Well, apparently, apparently I've been eating enough pasta because as soon as I got off, you know, we had that situation. That's okay. Make a good thumbnail though, so hold on a second. But I know people like good thumbnails. Yeah, that's not bad. Easy does your bud. Nice and easy. I just greased you like a week ago. You need some more already, huh? She must have been thirsty. So those first ones we put up, I had a bunch of these 16 penny coated sinkers, just regular hand framing nails on the ground and not in the box left over from another project. So that's why I was using them last time. But I stopped past this morning, same place I got the bolts. And I got some 16 penny ring shanks. And I got some eight penny ring shanks. So everywhere it's doubled up like this, we'll run 16 penny ring shanks in so it'll catch the board in both of those. And then to avoid this situation all the way around, we'll use the eight penny ring shanks when it's just a single board like that. That's the plan. The tool belt, uh, the little stirrups, I guess are dry rot. So now the belt is two separate belts. And that's just not working for me. Very well. I know. I'm as surprised as you are. I, I figured after six years of storage in the barn, it would be fine. How long were these? Oh, yeah. Got that part done. 
Look how nice this is planing out for us. Plane's pretty nice down through there. Pleasantly surprised. Pleasantly surprised. Let's go here. So that's the front wall. It looks really nice. Let's go get some more siding, some of the taller stuff, and we'll start working down these end sections. New day, new blade. It's hard to get a lot done in the evenings this time of year, swim season. Love going to swim meets, so it's always a good time. New shirt, too. What do you think of this? If you were one of the lucky winners in the 2000, no, that's not right, in the 50,000 subscriber giveaway contest, hopefully you have your t shirt by now. When we had those t shirts printed, though, we tried out a new color, just seeing if we would like it, if it's something we could would want to put on the future Captain Kleeman merchandise store. Remember on Circular Souls, it's Righty Lucy. And uh, I don't know, I kind of like this blue color. Let me know what you think. Since I've got some longer two by fours now that came in, most of these two by fours will be used on YouTube. Yeah, but anyway, since I have some that came in, we're just gonna put a screw right in the top. And we'll match the height down here on my mark. Get set. Then we can just set the board right on that. I'm not too concerned about how great the bottom of this thing looks. I mean, it's gonna have fence over it. It's gonna have landscaping, landscaping, I don't know, tall grass that's probably never getting weed eated. It's gonna have stuff like that around, so I'm not too concerned, but it just makes things a little easier. Okay, we've got that side trimmed up. It looks great. I'm adding a little blocking here to space this out where it needs to be. Just using our off cuts. And then we'll get the siding on this part. So I don't know if you're gonna be able to see what was going on with these, if you look down them. But there's a big, the board cuts in like this, the cut does. And it does it from both directions. So that's how I know it's not from warping or anything like that. It's the way I milled it, because it cups in like this on both sides. What that means is whenever I had it on the mill, I either didn't have the bunk level or I had something out of whack that it was milling like that. And that comes from not knowing what you're doing. But since we're using shorter pieces on this, I think I can cut it. We'll have a longer end and a narrower end, but we can kind of flip flop them around and keep our measurement from end to end even as we go across. We're gonna make it work, all right? I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to buy a bunch more timber if I don't have to. I mean, we're gonna have to, but not more than I have to. I'll put it like that.
Listen, when she comes and takes a tape measure, and you say, what are you using that for? And she says, none of your business. Is it expensive? I've got plans. She's got plans. She didn't answer the question. That'll work just fine. Not bad, I think it looks pretty good. A lot of people did ask if there's going to be windows. That row right there, that difference in the roof, that'll be windows there that open up. So we'll have, we'll be able to, in the summertime, to have lots of ventilation coming out the top. And in the wintertime, it'll be closed with the sunlight in. That is facing the south. So the sun from the south will be coming in there. And then whatever we got on the bottom side of this roof will make reflective, somewhat reflective, like a white paint or something, where that sunlight can come in and bounce down in the wintertime to help with that. It's a pretty kind of old design. It's been around for a while. Hopefully that answers that question. Believe it or not, this is all the siding we have left milled up. And this stack is the only stack we have that's tall enough for the back wall. About that far. Not very far down the wall at all, honestly. So I went ahead and measured that out in that section. And remember, there's a wall that goes right here, too. I've got that measurement. And then today, Saturday, Monday, I will call out to Phil H. and Timber Harvest, which is our local sawmill. And I will get some more hardwood ordered for the outside of this. Now, that'll be after we're done filming for this video. But I'll be sure to put editing Mike will take care of us. And right now, he will put the cost of what that is in the video really is looking good inside here. Aside from all these nails I gotta do something with, made a mistake on that part. We talked about it earlier. But the rest of it, got the right size nails now, so not an issue, but it's really looking nice. I had quite a bit of questions about how we're gonna frame this in. It's not as complicated as it might seem. Everything just kinda lays on itself. Let's just go ahead and tackle it, and I'll show you what I mean. Oh. Wasp already. Oh dear. They're excited. So let me grab a two by four and we'll get that in. So that valley, I'm hoping you can see that string well, that valley will run right across there. Okay. I can go ahead and pop a line there if I want. See where that valley comes out? where my mark lines up with where the top of that purlin is going to be. That's perfect. That's exactly what we want. That looks great. So that plane's across there nice. I've got this board cut. Just kind of wanted to show you that. Oh, thank you. I've got this board cut. Probably easier if I just hop up here. Just hold a quarter over and that should get me there. Find out. Let's see, so that's gonna go. That's just gonna snug up in there. And that's gonna fit just like that and I'll hold it down wherever this plane's at. Cause I'll just slide this across wherever that plane's and we'll run a screw into it. Just like that. Now we'll slide this around here in a second. This is just gonna hold it for me. Looks good. I'm gonna slide it that way just a little bit. So this is lined up on my chalk line, and the elevation is right, so the purlins, when I run across, will plane on that. OK. 
Okay, let me get some screws in each end to hold her in place. Now that is the bottom of where our valley is at. See? Easy peasy. A little tracing, a little planing. We're where we need to be. And then when we run the purlings across, well, we're getting ready to do that. So let me just show you. So we're going to go two feet on these. I just bump it right on that valley. I'll hold it too. The easiest way I know to do this by myself is just put nails down on this end where I'm gonna run my marks. Running that one all the way up. You don't have to be really far in there. Just a little bit. Yep. Okay. Slide it down until it bumps. Remember, it's not in there too far, so don't be slamming it. Run this down to 27 and a half, so it's the same as that end. And nail it. See what we got going on? Pretty simple. Nothing complicated about it. And if you're thinking, well, that's a lot of waste of an offcut. It doesn't get wasted. It gets used right down here. I'll show you. We're just eyeballing these. take these pieces that we cut off the ends and we'll use to fill in solid for blocking here. Well that's a bummer. Any chance you could grab that for me? All right. There you go, man. Appreciate that. So there was supposed to be a big storm rolling later that night, and in fact, it was a pretty bad storm that came through, and I knew that was coming, so I wanted to get some more cross bracing done 
but I was hoping to get enough done that I could kind of show you how this valley is going to frame in. If you can just imagine from this blocking that I'm putting in here, some rafters run up to the top of that ridge. It's not too complicated of a gable. It's more for form than it is function, if we're being honest. But we can see it from the house, so we do want it to look kind of nice. And there'll be some more detail on how that all frames in whenever we actually put the roof metal on. But this is the cross bracing that I want to add before that storm comes through, especially now that we've actually got some siding up on the walls that can actually catch the wind and kind of put a little bit more pressure on it. Now one other super random question that we keep getting, and I want to go ahead and make sure I address while we're getting these holes drilled out and these bolts put in, is we do plan on using the rainwater off of this roof to water the goats and the chickens. We use a rainwater system off of the house currently for the current chicken coop. So between the house rainwater and the rainwater off the barn, we should have an ample amount for the animals that we'll have down here in the mini barn. Let me get this cross brace built. It is gonna be for more timber that we did have milled up. And although we are out of milled siding, I still have quite a bit of milled timber left for the perches and the nesting boxes and the roosting areas and some separation walls on the inside, the little half walls on the inside for the goats and that kind of thing, for the runs and the stalls. We're just out of siding. Anyway, let me get this cross brace knocked out, and then I want to show you a gift that came in the mail from Sassafras Valley, and I'm pretty excited to share it with you guys.
So I do just kind of want to set your expectations and make sure we're all on the same awkward swinging angle here. We're all on the same page. This will be the last barn video for a hot minute. And the reason for that's pretty simple. You see, we're out of money. It's amazing how that works. Uh, you have some and then you spend it and then you don't. We planned on building this barn this summer, but not at the beginning of the summer, kind of mid to late summer. But the floor system is taking so long on the YouTube yacht, I either had the choice of sitting around and waiting for the YouTube yacht floor system to come in and doing nothing, or going ahead and putting up the material that we had and trying to make the most out of it. Drop the socket, so that's as tight as we're getting there. She snugged up nice. So that's what we did. We just made the most out of it. We had material sitting around, and this is how far we got with it. It does give us enough done that we can go ahead and do the next step, or a next step. We can go ahead and move the chain link from the old run and go ahead and run that out this side. They're gonna be chain link panels that go out this way, down that way, and then meet on the end, obviously, to close it in. That's what the chickens are in now, is a chain link run with a couple little roosting things. So we can go ahead and move that down here, this chain link run. We can go ahead and move those panels down there, get rid of some of the older stuff we're not gonna use. They'll still have their feeding area, they'll still have their roosting area. Same setup they have now, but we'll move it down there out of the way to its new permanent location. And we can go ahead and take that. It'll connect to this end and it'll go out this way, over and back. We can go ahead and put that in. So they'll have the same living condition as they're in now, but down here in their new location, and that frees up that space up there, so we can go ahead and at least get that cleaned up, and there's a couple trees we wanna take down up there, and we can go ahead and do that. But as far as spending money, you know, we're just plumb out of it, bud. The good news is, we do have the lumber for the purlins on the back. I guess we could piddle on that and put those on one day. And I gotta get some fly rafters on this end, so we got that to do. I'm gonna go ahead and call a logger weight and see if we can't get this backside of this timber ordered, but that's gonna to have to sit a little bit before we put it up. And we've got the price on the metal. Ouch, that's all I'm saying about that. Ouch, we're gonna to have to wait a hot minute on that. I'm actually keeping my eye out for used metal on Marketplace. We might just end up going that route with the price that just good old fashioned 5V roof metal costs right now. Let me show you what came in the mail. Now, if you remember, Sassafras Valley made us a captain's wheel for the YouTube Yacht Project. Now, if you're super new to the channel, this is the YouTube Yacht. Steamboat, shaped and themed rental cabin, paddle wheeler, main level, next level, wheelhouse. We're waiting on the ICF floor system to come in. There's a pretty big lead time on it. Uh, yeah, okay, there you go. Now, back to the barn. Oh, yeah. Did you do this work with your new scroll saw? Whoa! Where did you get that from? Look at that. Would you look at that? Oh my goodness. Obviously it's an anchor, coat rack, hat rack, whatever you want to hang on it. He's got keyhole inserts on the back side. Sassafras Valley Woodworks. Look, can you see this? I've got to get the camera. Hold on. There you go. You can tell he used his new scroll saw to do the lettering. It looks awesome. Look at this up here. How cool is that? It's got my logo and everything in there. That is awesome. Very, very cool. We said it before, and I'll say it again. We have, without a doubt, the best subscribers on this channel. We get some of the coolest stuff. Look at that. You know the amount of time that took? I can't thank you enough. I'm pretty sure if I supplied the wood, he would make the furnishings for the entire YouTube yacht. Barn looks great too, doesn't it?
You want the drone again? Let's do it. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. We got to put you in a safe place, bud. Man, you look good. Oh, I tell you.